Hi everyone, and welcome to the Fedora Quest Docs Hackfest. Um, so I should be presenting with Jonathan Lebon, uh, but he has some issues, so I will start and uh, I'll let him try to work out his issues and he will join us soon. Uh, but we don't need much to present, um, so that, that will be fine. So welcome everyone. Uh, the, the goal here today is to work on docs for Fedora CoreOS. So hopefully you have a basic idea of what Fedora CoreOS is. If you don't, that's fine. You can check out the links, you can check out the website. And I've pasted in the chat uh, a HackMD link, which is a convenient way to share information. And you should also be, you should also see the, the HackMD Share the, the, on the screen. Um, so the the general idea is um, that we we are look we are we are we want to improve the the Fedora Chorus docs uh, during this hacks fest, and so the easiest way to do it is to do it together <laughs> at the same time, and hopefully uh, we'll be here. And there are a lot of chorus folks here, I think. Uh, to help both with questions and with review, uh, PRs and everything. So feel free to ask questions either in the chat or in the IRC um, channel for, for Fedora CoreOS. So I don't remember if we put it here. Hmm. We did not put links here. Maybe you should have some links. You can add a link uh, if you yeah. want me to put in. Uh, Great. To the ISC channel, maybe. Um, so yeah, feel free to ask questions. Of course, we're here to help too. And there will be, just a notice, there will be a, a second uh, Fedora. There are multiple uh, Fed, Fedora chorus presentation during uh, Nest, uh, but there will be another session on Sunday, uh, which is more like a workshop for getting started with Fedora chorus. Uh, and so, and, and this on this is on Sunday, Sunday morning. All right, so let let's get started. the The idea here is um, so the source. Uh, oh, I cannot point on my screen, but I, maybe I can highlight. So the sources are here uh, for the Federal Cor Chorus Docs. And the version that is displayed, that is available for everyone, is here. That's the official Fedora course, Fedora Docs website. Um, unfortunately, the website is not updated every time somebody commits, and everyone, every time a commit gets in, so it's lagging a little bit behind. It's updated something like once a day, so you will not get, have the pleasure of seeing your work. Uh, be available right now on the website. You will have to wait for tomorrow. Um, the ID. Uh, so if you need any help uh, with Fedora CoreOS, you can start with the existing documentation. There are instructions for either launching in cloud providers or directly on your system. And of course, if you want to work on the docs, you will probably want to preview the, the changes that you've made locally. And that's easily done by the link here by the very really short instructions. You basically need Podman or Docker, and that's it. Writing documentation is great, but making it available to more people is also great. So we, if you want to work on the translation, you can head over there to the translation page. So I'll give it a quick look here. Uh, so that's the Federal course. Uh, documentation, uh, the translation page. Uh, I think this one is in French because I'm in France. And uh, you can go over each page and translate strings in the documentation. That's that's easy. And, uh, and yeah, that would greatly help. Um, if you want, if you're ready to go in and dive into Fedora Chorus and write new docs, we've made a sample PR here on GitHub. Uh, oh, that's not the one. That's, you know, sorry. Uh, so if, if you want to go in and we have made some suggestions about what we you could work on and help us do. Uh, so it's on the Fedora Chorus 
docs on GitHub, repo on GitHub, and we've labeled the issue with good first issues and doc access. Uh, to help you get started, feel free to ask Christian directly in the issues or in the chat, and, and we'll try to help. Um, so, the documentation itself. Um, yeah, you can put most pages uh, in in the system configuration uh, section. It's okay. If that's not an issue. We will move pages if that's necessary. So we, yeah, we made, as I said before, we made a sample PR to help you get started. So if you want to like get the basics of how to create a page uh, in the docs, that's the chances that we will need to do here. Okay, so we are quite a bunch here and uh, I will be monitoring the chats and and GitHub soon, but the to avoid stepping on each other's toe, the goal is to you should have access to this document. I think it's oh it's limited to sign in user. So yes, as soon as you've signed in into ACMD, you should be able to edit edit it. So you can see the, the edit mark here. You can go there, it's marked down and if you want to work on a specific issue, please add yourself here as your as add your name and the issue you want to work on, so that we don't work on the same. Everybody does not work on the same issue, and we can assign issue to uh, to to people on GitHub. So uh, if you use your GitHub username, that will work great. Um, so yeah, we prefer GitHub workflows, so Git and PRs, but if you're not comfortable with that, it's okay. You you can do uh, direct contribution using ACMD. Uh, so similar to what we're showing right now, and uh, and uh, we will do uh, what's necessary to make this into a, a final PR once once we uh, once you're ready. And that's fine. one note about HackMD. Uh, the I, the preview mode of HackMD doesn't really support ASCII doc, um, but if you just use the plain text uh, editor mode, you know it's just plain text on your screen. So um, don't worry too much about the rendering. Yeah, and thanks, Dusty. And the last uh, the last things we that you can do is testing the actual docs, the current documentation that we have to make sure that it's still uh, relevant and still working. And so uh, at the same time here, uh, the, the same idea here, we don't want to all work on the same page. So if you want to work on a specific page and try it and verify it, you can add your name here in the docs and to, to tell everybody that you're working on this page, for example. And so, so we can split the work. Uh, just a quick note, as we are uh, still updating the tutorials for Sunday workshop, I suggest that you do not work on them because they are already changed from the version that is displayed in the docs. So if you work on them, please do it from the, 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 the version that is in the repository, the current master, um, and expect changes to it. So yeah. Everything else should be in, in better shape, but well, they they are okay, but they are not uh, they are not fully fully completed, and that's about it. So, Timothy, a uh, quick question yeah. on the testing. So, um, if somebody wants to grab one of those sections to to just run through and make sure the documentation looks good, um, I just added an example uh, in that section that says my username, and I will try to test this one. Does that look like what you were expecting? So if you scroll down on your screen. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Maybe make it like a bold and that's, that, that would be perfect. <laughs> there you go. Oh, good. Are there any questions? Otherwise, I'll leave the floor to you. 
and let's let's do some docs. If you're more comfortable asking questions directly, so there's chat, there's the ISC channel, there's here. You can ask for uh, for voice access if I understood correctly in Hopin. So you should be able to ask questions directly if you'd like. Timothy, good question. <clears throat> so when I tried to get access for sharing my uh, audio and video, <clears throat> I had to click a button and then like say apply to get added to the session. Did you approve me? Is that how I got added? Or okay, that's weird. I, I didn't do anything. You you got in okay. straight away. <laughs> I'm not sure how that works then. Because there was a period of time between when I applied and when I got in. Um, so. Yeah, I think Jonathan might be having some trouble getting uh, his video and audio shared too, but we'll just deal with those issues. We've got the uh, the event, the session um, channel here in Hopin, and then also Fedora Core OS on Freenode. Um, so if people have any questions, just ask those there. Um, Hey, can you hear me okay now? Um, I think you're muted, but by your expression, I think it's oh. yeah. Oh, you can't hear me? I can hear Timothy. I'm not uh, sure Jonathan so can hear. <laughs> it's you, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, it's you, Jonathan. <laughs> can you say something now? Yep, yep. Can you uh, hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. All right. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for uh, leading the uh, beginning, Dusty and uh, Tim. So Jonathan, as a user coming into this, uh, what would you do in order to uh, contribute to the docs? What's your first step? I think I would fork the GitHub repo, and then I would clone it locally, and then I would just try to build and preview it uh, on my laptop. And then once I have that, then I can, you know, maybe see what uh, what issues interest me. Or if I've never tried for a core before, I would definitely either try to use libvirt or Chemu to to play around with it and just make sure I understand like how to pass an ignition config uh, to the VM. And if you've never used Fedora Core OS before, you can easily sign up to just test a section of the docs. Um, and 
you know, make sure that it's good for a new user, right? So that's that's a good way to contribute as well. Timothy, um, do you want to pull up on the, your screen share the example PR to, to the GitHub repo and just step through that briefly? So here you should be able to see, let me check, yeah, the example PR for the repo that we've made. Uh, so it's in the docs over here in the middle here. And uh, the basic idea is if you, you'll start with adding your page here in the nav section, so it's it's a basically a file which lists all the sections that are in the documentation. So you can see here it's being, it's underneath authentication kernel tuning. So that would get under the the right here. And once you've added the page here, so you see here you had just the name of the document that you want to reference. No need to put the full path. And here you just created in almost the same directory, just underneath the pages directory here. You had a new page, same name, oh, which is wrong. <laughs> you, you did not put the same name. I'll, I'll go and, fix that. <laughs> yeah, I, I called it new example, but then I just changed it to example and I didn't change the file name, so I'll go fix it. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, so yeah, you you write directly Husky doc here, and that will create you a, a, do a page for you. I can show hey, that this. was a test. That was a test. <laughs> I wanted to make sure you uh, caught it in code review. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, Husky doc is like close to Markdown, but not exactly the same. So depending on how comfortable you are with Markdown, it's going to be easy. I don't know if the reference is here somewhere. Maybe we can find it. There should be some reference here. Well, doesn't really. It's it's easy to like copy paste from the existing doc. I, I would say that's the easy way to go. So I'm pinged. What's happening? So for some of the issues, I added a acceptance criteria to try to make it clear what we wanted out of the issue. Uh, but I didn't get through all of them. But if, if you have a doubt about, um, or some of, them, some of them are maybe already clear enough. So if you have a doubt about what needs to, to get done for, for a specific issue, you can, you can ask us uh, in chat or in the issue too. I have a question about translations. So 
how does that typically work? Do is there anything that's auto auto translated, <laughs> or is it completely all um, like kind of manually done? And so, for example, if I go in and I change a section, like I change a paragraph, uh, do does somebody then need to go in and like change the translation? Gotcha. Yeah. So um, if I go to the translation website, um, here, let me just sign in. So if I go to Fedora Cores and uh, so previously I had done all of these, so let's go for index, for example, there are some strings to check here. Oh, so there have been changes. So that's a good example of what you ask. Uh, I had translated the initial index page in French for, for the Fedora Cores docs. And so there have been changes and they are shown here. And so you've got, so the changes, the English version, the new English version, which has double spaces, <laughs> so it should be fixed. And that's the final uh, French version that I had originally that I sh should uh, update. Okay, so cool. I'll just edit this one and uh, when it's done, I'll go save. So I'll do this in a second, but just underneath you can see all of the strings that I have to, that I have that are there to translate and some checks here. How does it, um, how does it break up into different sections? Does it just use like a single line of text or does it uh, just do paragraphs? Like if I, if I write a, a section of documentation and I manually line break a couple of times, does it pick that up or no? I think it's paragraphs, but um, so far from what I've seen. Cool. Okay. Thanks for the um, tutorial. Sure. Yeah, somebody started translating here. Okay, so I'm gonna start hacking on some docs. Um, you know, I'll periodically look at the, the uh, chat and the channel here and also in Fedora Core OS. And, um, you know, if anybody has any questions, ask to share your audio or video or, or post them in the chat and happy hacking. Did update the example PR, so it, it should be better.
seems like we have a couple questions about translations. Um, maybe we can debug Raphael's issue on your screen, Timothy. And for Sylvia, maybe we can do um, like a how to get started with translations brief mini tutorial. Yeah. So let me. So you get in constant and check. I'll, I'll do a recap translation so that. Um, so let me write this one as in progress. So, if you go on the HackMD, you can see here the link for translations. So it's the, the Fedora Translate, the WebLate uh, service. So if I go there, you here you need to sign in. You should sign in. It's, I think it's not required, but it's better if you sign in using your Fedora account. Uh, ID uh, because you can then directly uh, save the translations and that's easier for you and for everybody. Um, you you will get more power uh, in a way. Uh, so once you sign in here, you should go to the Fedora Chorus page. So if you're on the dashboard, for example, and you want to look for it, you can go over here, uh, look at the project, browse all projects. And then you can search for CoreOS or OS. Oops, and there you go. So I would recommend to let's say get started with the easiest one is the index. It's a basic page, landing page. So you should click here on the index page. You will see multiple language. If your language is not already there you should do start a new translation and then you have to choose language so pick the one you want to do and go ahead and start the new translation once you've done that you should be greeted either with a page like this with all the language or directly here on the page here so if, if you click on translate uh, you can, uh, yeah, you get in into this interface here where you get all the strings to translate and you get them one by one. So you have to read the English version here and translate it here in a language. Once you're done, if you feel like it's okay, the translation is perfect, you, you don't think it needs any work, you can go and save it directly. If you feel like it's not complete or maybe it should be better, you can go and check the box here to say that it needs editing or put it as a suggestion. Uh, or if you don't want to do this string right now, you can just skip it and move to the next one. And so that just like here, it goes through all of this, all of the text and you should translate every, each one of them. Uh, if you want to skip to a specific one, you can go underneath here. You've got all the strings to translate and you can click on one and you will be sent to it. You can watch out and write for this box here, things to check sometimes when you make mistakes or if there are something that is inconsistent, uh, you, will, uh, you will get a warning here and you can see well, it depends on the issue you have. Does that help? Uh, let me check the chat.
usually you can like override most of the web late uh, checks. So if you think you're right, you just go ahead and override it and it, it doesn't matter. Weird. Is translate.fedoraproject.org down for anybody other than me? If you try to open a new one. Working here. Just me. That's good news, because I'm glad everybody who's editing things in a browser window <laughs> isn't going to lose something. It's DNS. Always, always do.
Timothy, we got a specific question about translations in the chat. Um, maybe you can help Sylvia with that particular issue. Right. So when you have links, so let me find this one. Uh, when you have links, you have to keep the links in English. So this one should be... Is it in the index, maybe? Yeah, so here. So uh, you can see here the, in the source in English, you have the link here. So that, that part you have to keep it as is. And then you get the actual content that is displayed to the user. And that's the one, the one you want to translate. So here I've translated it into French and everything else I've kept as is.
I think. Is there a time this session ends, by the way? It's yeah, that's I about think it. it's technically eleven fifty, so now. Okay, cool. I don't know, uh, you know, we might get kicked out at some point. I'm sure people have uh other sessions they, they might want to join as well. Um should we kind of close out the session? Uh, and, you know, obviously what people are working on, they'll open PRs and we'll just go through it that way. Um, and obviously, if people have questions, we're also in Fedora Core OS on Freenode. Um, so we'll be available. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, Thanks. I mean, if you want to contribute, like if you're doing translation right now, but you also want to um, contribute with the uh, Adding new docs, there's still like all the uh, issues in the in the GitHub repo with the good first issue label. So you can always, uh, you know, after after this hack fest, uh, pick whatever you want, and uh, docs are always always welcome. Um, okay, I guess um, that's it then. Uh, Tim, did you want to say anything else before we finish? Yeah, just a, some closing remarks. Like, such as thanks everyone for joining us today and uh, for writing docs. Actually, and I think he might be having translation connection can't, issues can't, now. Can't I can I can hear Timothy. Okay. <laughs> I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't so, know if so Jonathan thanks, can hear us. Thanks. Thanks for joining us and. Uh, and for working on docs, I see some translations have been with with there have been some update. Yeah, we've got new translations. That's great. And uh, yeah, and I have seen some PRs too. So that's cool. And so thanks everyone, thanks everybody. And uh, we'll stay, I will stay here for a while. And we are still available in the chat in the events, of course, and on free node, as Justy said. Feel free to ask any questions either on the chat or directly. And we'll be there for the next session, which will be on Sunday morning for the Fedra um, Chorus workshop, which is like the getting your hands dirty with Fedora Chorus session, if you haven't done that already in this one. And there are a lot of Fedora Chorus, uh, there are multiple Fedora Chorus sessions uh, during this event. There's a, something on OKD, I think, and another one about introduction to Fedora Chorus or something like that. I don't remember. Yeah, it's kind of funny. The OKD session actually got scheduled at the same time as this one. So uh, ah. that happened at 1030. So go back and watch it later. And uh, there is a Fedora Core OS talk tomorrow and then uh, the hack, the workshop on Sunday. So, um, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I'll stay here for a while and see you maybe on Sunday. Oh. Anytime during the chat in the chat. See, thanks everybody.